Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss about the directed acyclic graphs. The directed acyclic graphs are the useful data structure for implementing the transformation of basic blocks of three address codes. So uh, we have the three address codes. You should understand the sequence uh, of uh, how we have uh, actually reached to the directed acyclic graphs. We have the three address codes. In the three address codes, we can find out the basic blocks. The purpose of the purpose of finding the basic block is to find out uh, the uh, loops in that uh, based on the control flow analysis or the program flow graph. Fine. I again repeat what uh, what actually takes place that we have the three address codes. Uh, all the three address codes will have uh, will have the statements of assignments. We have we will have the expressions of uh, arithmetic operations then the array operations and the pointers also some conditional jumps and the unconditional jumps so every loop in the source code has now been converted to the conditional or unconditional jumps okay now we do not have any loop in the three address code to find out the to find out the loops in the uh, three address codes we will have to do the control flow analysis on the basic block Okay, so we will have to do the control flow analysis. We will have to find out the basic block. Then we will have to uh, find out the uh, program flow graph. And after program flow graph, we will go for the control flow analysis on that program flow graph that will give us the loops. If uh, there is a cycle at that, we can say that, that there is a loop in the uh, program flow graph. Now, if we have the basic blocks, of the three address codes, we have found the basic blocks of the three address codes. Then we need to transform those three address code blocks to the uh, assembly language codes. And the assembly language codes that we are going to write should have the minimum number of the temporaries. So it is going to play a vital role while generation of the code through the uh, code generation phase. So let us uh, discuss three. Uh, let us discuss the directed acyclic graphs and its properties. So the directed acyclic graph is the, the first property of the directed acyclic graph is that it is a kind of the tree which will have no cycle. Obviously, the name suggests that it is a directed acyclic graph. It means this is the kind of the graph wherein there will be no cycle. In this, there will be leaves and uh, uh, there are different levels in the acyclic graph. So the leaf nodes here in the directed acyclic graph will have either the identifiers or it will be a constant. So leaf nodes will either be the identifiers or it will be a constant. In this graph, there will be some internal nodes also. Leaf node means there will be no further extension after the leaf node, but the internal nodes will have some extensions. So what will be the internal nodes? Internal nodes will be the operators. Fine. So the internal nodes, nodes will be signifying as the operators. And every node uh, uh, which is there in the which is there in the uh, directed acyclic graph, they are given a sequence of identifier for some label okay so nodes are also given a sequence of identifiers for label sequence of identifiers for label okay so you do you should not worry about if the third point is not clear to you uh, because we will be taking the example to make you clear all these three points. Uh, but there is one more property of this uh, directed acyclic graph that there will be exactly one DAG for each block. Okay, we have already identified the block of the three address codes, and uh, uh, you can see my earlier lectures of the code optimization wherein we have discussed about the uh, basic blocks. So every basic block is defined by one DAG or one directed acyclic graph. So let us take a very simple example and try to understand this basic block. 
Suppose we have a basic block a equals to b plus c then b equals to b minus d then c equals to c plus d then e equals to b plus c and we have to form the directed acyclic graph for this statement so this is this actually is representing one basic block one basic block is having four statements let's say we have named it as the b1 basic block and we now have to find the directed acyclic graph corresponding to this so for finding the directed acyclic graph let's take the first expression in a equals to b plus c b and c will be the identifier and the plus operation is performed on them just as we used to construct the syntax tree or the expression tree similar way we are defining that b plus c operation has been performed and the b plus c operations result is saved in some a variable so we have assigned the label a on this node so this is the third point here nodes are given a sequence of identifiers for label okay so a name has been assigned to this no particular node now after this the operation is b minus d so for performing b minus d operation you will not have to define this b or you will not have to create this p node again once it has been created we will be using the reference of this only so we are not going to create another node for this so this is b minus and d operation because d has not been made earlier so we will be making a new node for d so b minus d operation has been performed and the operation result is saved in b only now see a b was already there and the result is also saved in b fine mathematically it's not correct but in with respect to the computer science it is correct because in the computer science it is allowed that the result can be saved in the same variable fine now to dis the distinguish between this b and this b let us name this b as b0 okay now after this we have c equals to c plus d so c plus d operation is performed so plus is the operation which is performed with c and d and the result is saved in c now again to differentiate between this c and this c let's name this c as c0 fine now after this the operation which is performed is b plus c so here we have b and here we have c so either you can perform with, with this p and this c but this this p and this c has been produced later so we'll be using the later references of p and c and then this b and c are added and the answer is e here okay this is very interesting to understand that once we have found the new reference of b and c we will be using the new reference of p and c in the further operations so this is the dag for this basic block let us take another example it is a equals to b plus c then b equals to a minus d c equals to b plus c and d equals to a minus d so let us draw the directed cyclic graph for this so for the first statement this this again i tell you that these are the statements which are there in some basic block let's say this basic block is b2 so we have b plus c operation performed and the result of the b plus c is saved in variable a so operation is plus so operation is specified inside the node and the name of this variable is a fine now after this a minus d is performed so we will be taking the reference of a from here and the minus operation is performed with d so a minus d is performed and the result is saved in some p variable now once again just to differentiate between this b and this b we're writing here b0 the next one is b plus c to perform the addition operation uh, on this b plus c just, you just see that b plus c value has already been computed here so since b plus c value has already been created we should not create it again 
we should just name that wherever b plus c operation is performed here it was a earlier and c is there also at this place fine so a plus c so next operation is d equals to a minus d we can find a from here okay and then the d is here so a minus d a minus d a is here and d is here a minus d is d so we can so that d is here okay so this is the directed acyclic graph for this basic law so if you see this once again that what has actually happened first we have performed b plus c so b and c were added and the result was stored in A. So this level is A. The next operation is A minus D. So A is here. Minus operation is here. And D we are taking as a new one. So A minus D is performed and the result is saved in B. Next operation is C equals to B plus C. Okay. So B is here and C is here. The B plus C has already been computed. Which is stored in A. B plus C again gets computed and that is stored in C. So we do not need to draw this again for the directed acyclic graph this will be taken from here only and a was the name of a plus b plus c so c has already been given name for b plus c so we just have to write a comma c here next operation is d equals to a minus d you just see that a minus d has already been computed a minus d this is a minus d has already been computed which had a value b now so we can assign d also to hit this place Okay. Now just to differentiate this D and this D, you can apply a D0 here. Okay. So this is the basic block for this one. Now we can take one more example of this basic block. Let's say this is X equals to AI. And then AJ is equals to Y and then z equals to a of i now it is very interesting that we have the array operations so for array operations this angle brackets are saved in the uh, angle brackets are kept in the uh, nodes internal nodes okay so the first thing is x equals to a i so a and i will be the value of the nodes a and i as a leaf node and these are representing the array a angle bracket i so this is referencing ai the value of ai is stored in x so this level is x okay now this x is equal to this one so this this uh, node will node is containing equals to followed by the angle brackets so ai value is assigned to x so x equals to ai okay now next operation is aj equals to y so a is here let's take a j the new one and aj is assigned to uh, sorry y is assigned to aj okay y is assigned to aj so we need to have one more variable or one more note to this that is y and then this is a j is equals to y okay a j is equals to y Achha. then here also in the note we are writing like this angle bracket followed by the equals to sign okay so the angle bracket followed by the equals to sign is being assigned to y so a j is equals to y next reference is z equals to a i so a i has already been computed okay a i has already been computed so you do not need to compute it again so value of a i is stored in j so you just need to assign a z here or you just need to name it as z okay so this is the directed acyclic graph for array statements 
let us take some more example and uh, this is this will be a bigger example or the question which will have many statements and then we will see the optimization also with respect to the direct recyclic graphs let's say we have the statements we have the intermediate code generation statement as a three address code t1 is equals to 4 multiplied with i second statement is t2 equals to a t1 then t3 equals to 4 multiplied with i t4 is equals to b t3 t5 is equals to t2 multiplied with t4 there is no restriction on the number of the temporary variables you can take any number for one basic block these statements are given product plus t5 and then product is equals to t6 t7 is equals to i plus 1 and then i equals to t7 then we have a conditional jump if i is less than or equal to 20 then go to 1 let us name these statements label this statement 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 these are the labels of the statements let's draw the basic block for this uh, let's draw the directed cyclic graph for this all these statements are coming in one block that i have already told you that there will be exactly one directed cyclic graph for one basic block so the first thing that we have is 4 multiplied with i so multiplication is the operation with the operands 4 and i and the name given to this is t1 after this we have to perform a of t1 and we have to store that in t2 okay so we have the array reference operation which will refer to t1 so a under angle bracket t1 and this value is assigned to t2 so t2 is the level level of this node after this we have to do for t3 equals to 4 multiplied with i you just see that 4 multiplied with i has already been computed we just need to assign this a name t3 so 4 multiplied with i has already been computed we just need to assign a name t3 after this we have to do b t3 and this value has to be stored in t4 so b t3 will be referring to this in the angle bracket the t3 and a value b which is a new value for me so b t3 value is assigned to some temporary variable t4 okay so you i again repeat that inside the uh, in, inside the node inside the internal node we either are writing like this if we have some variable x on the left side which is assigned a value of the array uh, array, array value and if we have to assign something in the array value it is written like this okay now so b t3 has been b t3 value has been assigned to t4 so fourth statement is done after this we have t2 multiplied with t4 so where is t2 and where is t4 t4 is here and t3 is here so we are we are going to perform the uh, multiplication of this t4 and this t2 and the answer is stored in t5 okay now next operation is t6 equals to product plus t5 so we have to perform the addition product is the new variable which is coming up so a new node will be created for this so product plus t5 this value will be stored in t6 after this we have to assign the value of this product to t6 it means this product plus t5 value has to be assigned to product because this is t6 or you can say that by by this statement product is equals to t6 product is same as that of t6 now earlier i told you that if we have to differentiate between this one and this one you just name it, name this variable as product zero after this we have the statement t7 equals to i plus one 
So i is here, apply an operation plus and 1 on the right hand side, assign this a value t7. Fine. After this i equals to t7. So i is given the name to this label. Just to differentiate this one and this one, you can write it here as i0. After this, we have a conditional jump. If i is less than or equal to 20, go to 1. Fine. So less than or equal to is the operation, relational operator which is performed. On i and 20, so i is on the left hand side and 20 is on the right hand side, we are assigning this a value. And we have to go to label 1 here. So to assign it a label, we will be writing it like under the parenthesis, we are going to write the label number which is 1 here. Okay, I again repeat to the last statement how we are writing the conditional jump. If i is less than or equal to 20, so we do not have to write here, write here i, it is just that we have to apply the relational operator. On the left hand side, there is i, on the right hand side, there is 20. So comparison is made between i and 20. If i is less than or equal to 20, we have to go to 1. So to just to represent the conditional jump, we have to write 1 here. Okay, so this is the directed acyclic graph of uh, the three address code statement which is given to us. Now having done this, we just need to find out what are the applications of the DAX. Also already we have formed this, but what are the application of this uh, DAG? So if, if we have formed the DAG, the very first application will be that we have to find out the common sub expression and eliminate the duplicates. Okay. So we have to find out the common sub expression. So very first application is find the common sub expression and eliminate it. Second is we have to find out which name is used here in this block, which, which name is used in this block, but what, what was evaluated outside this block. Okay, for example, here we are going to use this i, but this i was declared somewhere else, or i was actually given a value somewhere else. We are just using this i here. Similarly, the product, product has been, product has been computed somewhere else, but we are actually using it here. So the second application of this is, we have to determine which value are used in the current block but was declared but was declared outside this block In some other block, this value has been evaluated. We are just using those values. Similarly, another application of this would be that we have actually computed the value of something here, but the value of this is being used by somewhere else. So if we have to determine which statement of block could have been computed, In current block but being used outside the block or by the some other block okay so one of the variable which is assigned a value here but is being used by somewhere else okay so these are the three applications of this now uh, for the for the for the three address code that we have already written here, let us find out what are the labels or what are the statements here in which there are multiple labels assigned. So what is this one? T six and product. Another one is this one. T three and T one. Okay. Another one is here. T seven and I. 
okay we just have to according to the first application we have to eliminate the duplicates okay we have to eliminate the duplicate statements so let us try to find out this we have the different temporaries t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 and t7 we have just written this in the sequence now let us write the first statement first statement is t1 is equals to 4 multiplied with i so this is a required statement second is t2 is equals to a t1 this is also a required one okay the third statement says that third statement says that t3 equals to 4 multiplied with i so we already computed this 4 multiplied with i which was assigned to t1 okay so now t3 has no requirement so we can eliminate this t3 and similarly we can eliminate this statement also so this statement is not required so we are going to write the next statement then so the next statement here becomes t4 is equals to a sorry b of instead of writing t3 we will be writing t1 here because the t3 has been removed and t3 is same as that of the t1 the next statement is t5 is equals to t2 multiplied with t4 okay so this is also a new one so we'll be keeping this statement the next statement is product equals to sorry t6 equals to product plus t5 first write this statement t6 is equal to product plus t5 fine the next statement says that product goes to t6 so product is same as that of the t6 so t6 is not required so instead of writing this t6 we can write here directly as product so we are actually eliminating this statement okay so product and t6 are same if we have if we already have the product with us so no need of creating the temporary variable t6 so t6 is not required here we have eliminated this statement also now after this we have the statement t7 equals to i plus 1 so t7 is equals to i plus 1 the next statement says that i equals to t7 so i equals to t7 means we already had this i why did we create this t7 as a new temporary so this new temporary is also not required so instead of writing this t7 here we are writing i equals to i plus 1 fine the next statement here is if i is less than or equal to 20 go to 1 fine so this statement will be as such because this is a new one so if i is less than or equal to 20 go to 1 fine so see that we instead of writing the 10 statements we have reduced it to 7 so we have done some kind of the optimization here so new temporaries which have been which were created unnecessarily have been deleted and we are now with the optimized code so directed acyclic graphs are going to play a vital role in the code optimization as well as in the code generation fine so we have found that uh, these are the, uh, the we have found that we have the common sub expression and we have eliminated it so this is the first application which is clear now the second application says that we have to find out the value which is used in the current block but was declared outside the block okay so you can just see that to watch which is the variable we have started using it directly so i is a variable which we have, which was started being used directly similarly product is the variable which is started being used directly no other variable so this product and i are actually being depicted in this application number two we are using its value but we have not initialized its value here fine now determine which statement of the block could have been computed in the current block but being used outside this block this is the third application so wh where we have computed the value uh, in this statement yes we have used the value we have computed the value of this product but we have not used product anywhere else we have not performed any operation with the product here we have not performed any conditions any conditional aspect of the product is not there in this state in these statements or in this block so product is the value which is computed here but will be used outside this 
but what for i we have computed this new value of the i but the i value is being used here as a condition so the third application is not for this i this is only for this product okay we are computing the value of product here but this value will be used by some other block fine so this is uh, some something about this uh, uh, this directed cyclic graph you can take many other examples and you can form the bag by yourself thank you